final question, we've got a passage question. So let's have a read of it and highlight the important parts. Alzheimer's disease leads to dementia, and this involves small beta amyloid proteins binding together to form plaques in the brain. Nerve cells in the brain produce a large protein called amyloid precursor protein, and this has a complex shape. This protein is the substrate of two different enzymes, alpha and beta secretase. These enzymes are normally produced in the brain. One product of the reaction catalyzed by beta secretase is a smaller protein that can lead to beta amyloid protein formation. Many people with Alzheimer's disease have mutations that decrease alpha secretase production and increase beta secretase production. One possible type of drug for treating Alzheimer's disease is a competitive inhibitor of beta secretase. When some of these types of drugs were trialled on patients, the trials had to be stopped because some patients developed serious side effects. Use info from the passage and your own knowledge to answer the following questions. So you can see what I've done at the side here is I've drawn out a diagram to help simplify this because there's a lot of words and it's actually just a process that you need to be able to visualize. So I've drawn the amyloid precursor protein and I've drawn, so that's the substrate and two different enzymes, alpha and beta secretase that work on it. And this beta secretase works on it to produce a smaller protein, beta amyloid proteins and then plaques. So in Alzheimer's, which I've drawn here in blue, people have less alpha secretase or more beta secretase. And in green here is this drug. So let's try and answer the questions. So the first part, suggest how amyloid precursor protein can be the substrate of two different enzymes, alpha and beta secretase. So this is testing your knowledge of enzyme action, but also requiring you, requiring you to have read the passage properly. If you've read the passage, you'll see that I've highlighted complex shape. And this is really important. So if we have a look at the diagram, how I just naturally drew it, we can see there's two different shapes on either ends where these enzymes work. So perhaps the enzymes are able to bind to different parts of the substrate. So they're still both specific, but they can bind to different parts. And so I've written here, both enzymes have active sites that are able to bind to different parts of the amyloid precursor protein. So they're both still specific. So if we have a look at the mark scheme here, so you could have just said the first part for one mark, different parts of the protein or different amino acid sequences, but at the second point you can actually get two marks for on its own. The fact that each enzyme is specific or fits or binds to or is complementary to a different part of the amyloid precursor protein. And that's two marks there. So the next part now, describe what happens in the hydrolysis reaction that produces the smaller protein from amyloid precursor protein. So this is testing your knowledge of hydrolysis reactions and also of proteins. So the general definition of a hydrolysis reaction, it breaks a molecule into smaller molecules by breaking a bond and by requiring a water molecule. So we have to specifically say what bond would be broken here. We're talking about proteins. The amino acids are joined up by peptide bonds. So you'd put that and then also mention that a water molecule would, is used and that would get you two marks as we can see on the mark scheme here. The next part, many people with Alzheimer's disease have mutations that decrease alpha secretase or increase beta secretase production. Use the info in, to explain how these mutations can lead to Alzheimer's disease. So I firstly talked about generally what mutations do. In this case, they would prevent a functional alpha secretase enzyme or increase beta secretase production. You don't need to know the details of how that might happen, but just relating the gene mutation to the protein. And then what really helps here is looking at our diagram. So the most obvious one to start with is beta secretase. If there's more beta secretase production, we can straight away see from visualizing it here that you're gonna have more of this beta amyloid proteins and therefore more plaques, which is what actually causes Alzheimer's disease. So there we go, I've written more beta secretase, more beta amyloid production, more plaque. You could have just said that, but you could have also gone down the alpha secretase route. So if there's less alpha secretase, there's more of this substrate of the amyloid precursor protein hydrolyzed. 
more of it left. So again, more substrate for beta secretase, more plaque. And again, I'll show you the mark scheme. Um, so pretty much what I've just said there. So you needed to talk about the mutation, um, how it works and how that affects plaque production. Part four, one possible type of drug for treating this disease is a competitive inhibitor of beta secretase. Explain how this type of drug could prevent Alzheimer's disease becoming worse. So this is actually testing your knowledge of competitive inhibitors, but in a different context to what you're used to. So we know that competitive inhibitor binds and blocks the active site. I've said that there's fewer enzyme substrate complexes formed. It wasn't on the mark scheme in this case, but always good to put it. But importantly, therefore, there's less beta amyloid produced. And that's the thing that contributes to plaques. So less plaques can form. And you can see here, I've just bullet pointed out my answers so I can see that I fully answered the question. So we can see the inhibitor binds to and blocks the active site and stops the production of beta amyloid plaque. Okay, then the final part. When some of these types of drugs were trialled on patients, the trials were stopped because they developed serious side effects. Use the info provided suggests why some patients developed serious side effects. If we have a look back at our diagram, it's blocking beta secretase. So it's preventing this amyloid precursor protein from being hydrolyzed and broken down, preventing these beta amyloid proteins being produced. There's lots of different ways that you could go with this. And that's just one that I've chosen. Accumulation of amyloid precursor protein might be harmful, but I'll show you some of the other things that you could have put too. So this is the one that I've put on part two, you could have also taken that step further and said that if there's more amyloid precursor protein building up, there's going to be more substrate for the alpha secretase and the product of alpha secretase may also be harmful. The other route you could have gone down is actually the fact that preventing beta amyloid production isn't good because we need it in health anyway. We need this beta secretase. And there we have it. That's the 2016 AS Paper 1 complete. I hope you found that useful.